I do agree. Thank you, everyone. I want to welcome you to your meditation practice. We have about an hour together, or you can pop in for whatever part works for you. We've also got the Facebook Live going, and we're going to be doing um, meditation on emptiness in the second half. So um, that'll be great. And I'd like you to just settle into your practice right now. Find that comfortable position for your body. Make any adjustments you'd like. You can absolutely sit in a chair. If you are in a chair and the chair is not wide enough to have your legs crossed, then have your feet straight down, flat on the floor and feel that grounding with your space. Or feel free to sit in any cross-legged posture that works for you that supports an extended spine, as if your sides are long, Lama Zopa Rinpoche says. Head is slightly tipped forward, so it's not up here, causing distraction down here, causing drowsiness. Very subdued posture. If you'd like, you can straighten up the shoulders and send your shoulder blades down your back. But again, the shoulders are not up by the ears. You're not scrunched. The brow is not constricted. It, we want this to come from a relaxed space. Then the meditation flows organically. So just slowly find that comfortable posture. And as you do that, begin to deepen your respiration. You can lightly close your eyes. As we bring that gaze inward, really take a full inhalation a full exhalation. With each full inhalation, imagine bringing some positive energy into your body-mind experience. We can inhale joy. And upon an exhalation, releasing something you don't need right now that is not beneficial. We could release despair. And put it into your own words, what you would like to bring into your experience, what you'd like to release right now. A very important component as well is to check that you are relaxed as much as possible. You could even start at the top of your head, scanning down through your entire body, checking any places you're holding tension right now. Every exhalation, releasing some of that tension. Every inhalation, bringing it in space to those tense areas. Just try your best. Just take a couple of minutes, scan all the way down through, all the way out your feet and toes, bringing yourself to as relaxed a place as possible.
can let go any expectation you have about this period of meditation. And just be with what is coming, what is arising. It's a natural state of your mind. Don't worry about all the distractions, that's normal. The one thing that really helps us now is also to direct our motivation in a good way. This is you directing your awareness rather than having the distractions pull it into different directions. So we're very focused in our tradition on benefiting all living beings. If that interests you, feel free to include that in your motivation right now. The best way for us to do that according to this tradition is to become a Buddha, a fully awakened being fully awakened being. So feel free to include that or at least setting your mind in a most positive direction. Take a moment right now and set a good motivation for our time together and all the activities of the rest of your day. to further unclog our subtle energy system in the body. It's nice to do some sort of breathing or pranayama practice. We're gonna do the nine round breathing. I like to begin with an exhalation as taught by Lama Yeshe. So if you'd like, start by closing off the right nostril and exhaling deeply through the left. As you inhale, close off the left nostril, inhaling deeply through the right. Imagine as you do this, you're releasing anger and hatred from your mind stream three times. Our next round, we're gonna reverse. We're gonna close off the left nostril, exhaling deeply through the right. As you inhale, we're gonna close off the right nostril, inhaling deeply through the left. With this round, imagine you're lessening desire and attachment from your mind three times.
Our last round, we're gonna be exhaling deeply through both nostrils, inhaling deeply through both nostrils. As you do this, imagine you're lessening confusion and ignorance from your mind three times. Please settle your mind on a na normal, natural breath now. So we're not doing deep breathing or ujjayi breathing like in yoga, just a normal breath. If you'd like to follow that air as it comes in and expands the lungs, perhaps your abdomen shifts. And upon an exhalation, the contraction and the air up and out the nostrils Feel free to keep your mind focused there or the space just outside the nostrils where the air enters in and leaves the body. Whichever you like, keeping the mind focused there. It is very normal for your mind to wander. Relax. Simply become aware your mind is off the breath and gently, without any further story or elaboration, bring your mind back to the breath. Five minutes.
Feel free to apply a technique <clears throat> to keep your mind more focused. You can count your breaths. So one inhalation, one exhalation counts as one. You can see how far you can count before your mind wanders. If it does, simply become aware, gently. Bring your mind back to the breath. Begin counting again at one. You can also label your distraction and let it go, like bubbles in the sky. So perhaps it's a thought, some mental activity that distracts you. As soon as you become aware, just label thinking or a thought. That's all. And back to the breath. Maybe there's a sound that distracts you. Simply label it hearing or a sound. Back to the breath. Just try your best. Five minutes.
as you work with your mind, meditation is this form of getting to know your mind. Certainly not easy work, but can help us calm down. But also as we get to know our mind, helps us to better orient our mind. But slowly the process unfolds. So as we do five more minutes, then you can adjust your position like that. Allow this process to unfold. Use the word allow in your mind. So rather than trying to meditate, rather than having an inner monologue, am I meditating? not meditating well, things like that. Pushing, squeezing, right? Allow the meditation to unfold the mind in its natural state and whatever arises, distractions, bubbles of thoughts, simply let them go as much as you can allowing yourself to be in meditation, to be in meditation. Just try your best, five minutes.
to please take a moment right now. Relax for a moment. Open your eyes and take your mind off the breath. Feel free if you need to adjust your position. And as you do, I just want to give you just a preliminary thoughts about meditating on emptiness, which is not easy to do. It's a very profound part of our philosophy. And the problems that we have is all rooted in the solidity we place on the concept of ourself. The concept of ourself, me, myself, and I, or people say I, me, mine, this I that arises as this very strong, solid, independent sense of ourself. So anyone that interferes with that ever is a problem, creates a problem. Anything that gets in the way of our agenda, it's a problem. But mainly because we don't understand reality and how it actually exists. That's the problem. That's the problem. So this meditation is helpful to just give us a little sense of the space that could possibly be. But emptiness takes a lot of reading about it, coursework on it, coming to classes about it, having it explained accurately, learning how to meditate on it properly according to the four part analysis that this kind of takes you through in this meditation. Studying over and over, meditating over and over. So it's a many lives process. But slowly we can start to just dismantle a little bit of this very solid notion we have about ourselves that gets in the way of everything. It's the source of all of our suffering. So just sitting comfortably And just begin again, bringing the mind to the breath. So slowly right now with the alertness of a spy, I'd like you to become aware of the I, the letter I I'm talking about, meaning the sense of yourself. I'd like you to just get aware of that for a moment. And you can ask yourself some questions. Who or what is doing this meditation? Who or what is thinking, feeling? How does that sense of yourself, the I, come into existence? How does it appear to you? Is your I a creation of your mind? Or is it, some, is it something existing concretely and independently? in its own right. Just explore for a moment.
If you think you can identify that eye and find it, let's locate it. Where do you think it exists? The sense of yourself it has to be somewhere. We often feel it strongly, especially if you'd like to conjure up a time you have been extremely fearful or a time your mind has been completely disturbed with a delusion like anger, jealousy, depression. Feel free to call up a moment like that in a corner of your mind. Tremendously strong delusion, attachment perhaps. Notice that sense of yourself. It grips in your heart, in your throat, in your stomach, wherever it grips. Is the eye located there? Please check, where is it located? Take a moment and carefully consider the different parts of your body where it could be hanging out. Can you find the eye in your body, just your body right now? And consider it may be very, very small. So consider the molecular makeup of your body, the small cells, tiny particles. Can you find your eye in the body? And as you do this search, just start to finish up your search. We could go on for a long time searching in a longer emptiness meditation. But just like you just check right now, does the eye seem as vivid to you as it did in the beginning? That sense of yourself? As you look through the body, are you finding the eye there? Just notice how that relates to that vivid sense of yourself. Is it changing that at all? Perhaps you think you can't find it in the body. Maybe your mind is the eye. Maybe the eye is in the mind. Let's look at the mind. This is not the brain because that's part of the body according to Tibetan Buddhism. The brain is physical. 
The mind is not physical. Let's explore the mind. The mind is a constantly changing stream of thoughts, feelings, mental experiences, memories, coming and going, rising and falling. So which of these is the I? Is it a happy thought? When I feel that vivid sense of myself? Well, actually some of you may have brought up a very terrifying experience in a corner of your mind or great attachment or anger. Is it an angry thought? Is that the I? A jealous thought? Is it a loving thought? Or when you feel depressed? Is your eye the meditating mind? The dreaming mind? Can you find the eye in your mind? Please explore. I know this isn't easy, try your best. So when we analyze, when we analyze, the I has to be the same as that feeling, identical. It has to be one, we say, with that experience or that moment of mind. That's what the mind's made up of, that moment of mind. So even if you say, I think that I is the present moment, Tibetan Buddhism would say that present moment is made up of parts. It has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Is it the middle of that present moment? That's where the eye is. This present thinking moment, Tibetan Buddhism would say even the middle of that moment can be further broken down into a beginning, a middle, and an end. And on and on. So every single moment of your consciousness, every single piece of your body can be further broken down into its parts. If you think the eye is in your heart, the heart is made up of many parts. The aorta, the ventricle, the top, the bottom, the inside, the outside. So you'd have to say, there's only one eye. Which one of these parts is the eye? And if you say it's the top part of the heart is the eye, the top part is also made up of many parts. And you can go all the way down to a molecular level and those parts will continue to be broken down. So there's nothing there, ultimately. So just consider this again with the mind. Body and mind ultimately lacks any inherent nature. 
which is a concrete existence. These are synonyms. Intrinsic value is a synonym. It means something that exists independence, independently from causes and conditions, parts, and the mind having a certain experience of something and labeling it. There's no I there at all. No I there at all. But let's check. We have to keep checking to thoroughly convince ourselves. Is there any other place to look for the I? So could it be someplace separate from the body and mind? Just examine right now every possible idea you can think of, of where that very firm sense of yourself is, because we feel it a lot, and it's the source of all of our suffering. Let's analyze. Let's try to find it. Maybe you think the eye is in your brain. The brain's made up of parts. So once again, all of those parts, just consider for a moment, all of those parts can be further broken down. Can you find that essential element of the brain that is your eye? Can you find the essential element of your heart that is the eye? or your mental consciousness, if you think the I is there. So look again right now at the way the eye appears to you. How does it feel to you right now? Have you noticed any change? Do you still believe it's as solid and real as you felt before? So let's slowly now mentally disintegrate the body. So don't worry, you're still here. It's gonna be okay. I'd just like you to imagine for a moment all the atoms of your body separating, completely floating apart. So billions and billions of these minute particles simply floating off throughout space. Imagine as if you can actually see this. Now disintegrate the mind. 
So just let every thought, every feeling, every sensation and perception float away. And stay in this experience of space without being distracted by thoughts. When the feeling of an independent, solidly existing eye comes up, analyze it again more quickly. Does it exist in the body? Does it exist in the mind? How does it exist? So we don't want to fall into nihilism. My body is not the eye. My mind is not the eye. It's not there. So I don't exist. You do exist and you're sitting here meditating right now. We want to find the middle way between the two extremes of something I'll call concretization or reification. These long words for making a solidity of our eye. It is not the way it exists. And we want to avoid the other extreme of nihilism. Nothing exists. The middle way is I do exist, but in dependence on my body and mind. And it is on that dependence when you were born so one form of you, you could say, was baby. And then a name was placed on you. And then you as that being, as Patty, as Kath, then emerged, then came into being based on and dependent on your body and mind. That's why we can say, I am meditating. When your stomach is empty, you say, I am hungry, but it's your stomach that's empty. That component combined with the body and mind, we then label, labeled by the mind, I am hungry. So whatever exists is necessarily dependent upon causes and conditions, parts and names for its existence. That's how things come into existence. That's reality. As Lama Yeshi would say, that's touching reality. Not this false overblown notion that I exist as the center of the universe, completely independent of anything around me. And there is an interconnection with all of us as well that relates because everything lacks this inherent concretized nature. So we have what's called a relative existence, like a relative truth that we are sitting here meditating and we have an ultimate truth. There is no I there, no sense of yourself there ultimately ever, doesn't exist at all like that. Concretely, independently in the space does not exist at all. So if you can stay for a moment with the not finding, emptiness is an absence of that I in the body or mind. 
you have to do lots of meditation to get that feeling of the absence. Just introducing you here briefly. Let's just reflect for a moment again. You check the body, you check the mind. Can you stay with that space-like emptiness of not finding the eye in the body or mind? Just let go. But again, do understand how you do exist conventionally in dependence upon skin and blood and bones and arms and legs, organs, your mind, okay? And all of these in turn exist by depending on their parts, the cells, the atoms, the moments of consciousness, just like that. So go back now to that initial feeling of your sense, sense of self or the I. Think about how you exist conventionally, in dependence upon the mind and the body and your name. Those are the parts of the self. Apart from this sense of, of the eye that depends upon the ever flowing, ever changing streams of body and mind, is there an eye that is solid, unchanging, and independent? So the mere absence of such an inherently existing I is the emptiness of the self. Please relax. And may any benefit, any merit we've created from doing this meditation on emptiness and all the meditations in the past hour, may it help us grow more interest in studying and meditating on emptiness. All of the Buddha's 84,000 teachings were to get us to realize emptiness. That's how important it is. It takes time, okay? But may we fold that into our practices, any merit we've created that will help us reach that place of full awakening, Buddhahood, as then we can lead all others to that place as well and help all living beings perfectly. I'd also like to dedicate very much to the beings in Ukraine. May they find a peaceful resolution and may Russia stop the invasion immediately. And also for all of those who are struggling right now with health issues, body and mind. May they be healed, may they be freed instantly, may COVID decrease on this planet as quickly as possible. Thank you very much. I'm also going to post, <clears throat> for the Zoom room, I'm gonna post um, an emptiness meditation. I'll post the link if it's helpful. It's a little bit longer, I think. This was from Light of the Path Retreat some years ago. And you can find it on amymiller.com for those of you on Facebook Live. Go to the Listen. There's a lot of things on a YouTube channel it's connected to, and if that's helpful for you. Oops, let me just give you this link if you're interested. And um, any questions right now? 
before we close. Hi, thank you so much. Um, I was just wondering um, when you were talking about, I think you were saying dissolving or disintegrating the mind and the body. What, um, cause that was something, that's something I would like to try to practice more while I'm meditating. Oh, what were you like explaining in the sense of what exactly, like what thoughts to dissolve in the mind? Like, like I was just, if you could like re-explain that. Sure. I was actually, I was taking part of the meditation from Kathleen McDonald, How to Meditate. I really, really like her book. And that emptiness meditation in there is really great for beginners, but it's good at any level. And then I was using a little bit more from the way I led, lead the med emptiness meditation in the, the one I posted in the chat on Zoom. So what I mean is if you're just sitting, relaxing, and you're doing the meditation is just imagine for a moment your body disintegrating, splitting, you know, let it go. There's no more body there, for instance. And then let your mind go. Thank you, Catherine, for posting the Kathleen McDonald, How to Meditate, how you can get that book. It's fantastic for meditation. Then let your mind go, meaning any thought, just let all those thoughts sift off. We have so many different thoughts, right? Let them go. And so what you're technically doing is finding, I called, I said the four part analysis. The technical way, traditional way we meditate on emptiness is through this four part analysis. And what I mean by that is the first part is identifying what's called the object of negation. And that means an object you won't find. And that is first finding the eye. So the hardest part of these four parts is getting the eye. And most people think it's very subtle. It's, it's this thing that motors us through space. You come out in a parking lot and somebody opened their door into your car. Do you have a reaction? Some people do. You know, you're at a business meeting and one of your, you're not getting on with one of your colleagues and you're fighting over budgets or you don't like the person in the next cubicle or, or you're driving and someone cuts in front of you. How do you feel? Are you comfortable with that and you're spacious and everything's great? A lot of people are not. That's the eye you wanna bring up. This uncomfortable eye, you're in my space, you took my boyfriend, you broke up with me, you didn't give me the present I wanted. How come she got that and I got this? You know, on okay. and on and on. How come he got that off? So you're letting all that go. And so what you do, the first part is finding the eye. The second part is where can the eye exist? They say, what's the pervasion? That's the traditional way. Meaning, what are the possibilities? Well, that eye's gotta be one with the body and mind or it's gonna be separate from that. What are the other options? Step three is then you check the body and mind really, really thoroughly. We didn't have enough time, but we did it on a briefer level. And what I mean is you're going to spend a long, long time meditation after meditation after meditation. You have to do it like that. Unless you have really deep seeds of realizing emptiness from a past life. The reason you want to go through those meditations very skillfully and thoroughly initially over and over so that you are convinced it's not in the body and mind. I'm not finding the eye there. I've analyzed it thoroughly till you come to the fourth step, okay, is let's step outside the body and mind for a moment because I didn't find the eye. I'm pretty sure it's not in the body and mind. I'm gonna step outside. And as soon as you kind of do that, you realize it's not there. So that's the disintegration part, the way she describes it. And sometimes it's unnerving initially. That's a good sign because you go, oh my God, I don't exist, you know? Okay, one part ultimately doesn't exist. But again, you do exist by depending on your body and mind. You can't step in front of a bus and go, well, I'm empty of any inherent nature. The bus will kill you. So we don't wanna be foolish about how we practically engage with our karma and reality. But this gives us a way to engage in a more spacious way, realizing you're having a tussle with someone, you're having a disagreement like that. And you people get really charged. Look what's going on in Ukraine. This is a, Typical example of the concretization of the ego of Vladimir Putin, right? He just sees it as winning, losing him and the rest of the world. That's his view. Again, I don't know his mind, but it certainly appears that way, okay? So now he's invading. It would be like the United States going into Mexico right now. Seriously? 
we're going to take over Mexico? Well, who does he? So this concretization is the way the world operates. Normal sentient beings suffer from what we call ignorance and confusion because they don't have a direct perception of emptiness. So that disintegration is simply that fourth step, if that makes sense. Does that help? Yeah, that was really helpful. Thank you. Because I've heard people talk about emptiness meditation before, and I'm always like, so confused of what that meant. <laughs> so slowly, like, slowly, like it's <laughs> helpful to get a book like How to Meditate and you just slowly, again, you can check the link here of my meditation, just go over it again and again and again. You, but it's better to also study. You wanna do some reading on simpler books on emptiness so you understand what's happening so you don't refute too much. You don't wanna to negate too much where you fall into nihilism. Nothing exists, it doesn't matter. It does matter how you participate in your life does matter okay but you want to do it with a realistic balance and strike that find the middle way okay thank you so much sure have a great weekend everyone anyone else any other i have a question yes yeah i had heard that uh, some teachers say to their students when they think they're getting close to ready for pointing out instructions they say go and find your mind and then bring it back to me so that kind of goes along with what you're saying. And uh, can you talk about that a little bit? That's right. I wouldn't have any more to add than what I've mentioned. It's very similar. You know, you, you want to go find your mind and then you realize that it's not exact. It's not at all the way you think it exists. So it's very good to do that analysis. I find it really helpful. Yeah. Thank you very much, everyone. I'm going to stop there. And it's lovely to see all of you. Thank you so much for joining. And uh, look forward, we do have a refuge class on Mondays, 6.30 Pacific time. You can jump in anytime you'd like. It'd be really great to still get in. There's a Tuesday night class I'm also doing, Tuesday night East Coast, afternoons California time. You can find all of this again at amymiller.com. Like that. Thank you so much. See you next week. Thank you, Donna Thank, you, so Thank much. you, Catherine. Bye-bye. Thanks, Kat. Please take care, Thank you. everybody.